Salutations. There is a documentary percolating around the Magaspheres, directed and produced by Dinesh D'Souza, connected to the Heritage Foundation called 2000 Mules. The premise of 2000 Mules is as follows. Democratic Party aligned mules were paid by unnamed nonprofit organizations to illegally collect and deposit ballots into drop boxes in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin during the 2020 presidential election. The liberals vehemently say that there is no fraud or fraud in, 20, in the 2020 election. It was conducted fairly. And the Republican Party engages in voter suppression. They're the ones who are really the bad people. Whereas the conservatives vehemently say that there was a voter fraud and that Joe Biden won the election unfairly because of the votes that were substantiated. Somewhere in the middle of this polarity lies the truth, a truth that both sides might not want to hear, but they're going to hear it anyway. Like a broken clock, which is correct twice a day, I believe that Mr. Dinesh D'Souza is correct in this particular circumstance. Now, despite not having voted for Trump or Biden in the 2020 election, 2024, I'm voting Trump, I fully believe that the 2020 election was rigged and it was stolen. Since the time that Tammany Hall was established in New York City back in 1789, urban political machines have worked overdrive to stuff the ballot box with immigrant votes and the votes of the dead. The late governor of New Jersey, Brandon Byrne, a Democrat, once quipped, I want to be buried in Hudson County so that I can remain active in politics. And uh, let me tell you something, uh, living in Hudson County, uh, believe it, it's corrupt. This is really, really corrupt here. I mean, this is this is Robert Menendez Central here, right? It's the Hudson, uh, Hudson County political machine. It doesn't die. Now, this is not a conspiracy theory, folks. This is well-documented historical fact. Our electoral process has been tampered with by urban democratic machines for hundreds of years. What Mr. D'Souza is exposing or thinks he is exposing is unfortunately nothing new. The mules of 2020 are no different from Acorn in 2008, and Acorn is no different from the roving marauds of Tammany Hall partisans from the 19th century who would hire Irish gang labor to terrorize immigrants into voting for whoever the New York City Democratic Party machine backed in whatever election. What Mr. D'Souza is exposing has already been exposed. These groundbreaking revelations he claims to be revealing is nothing new. Now, on to the part why Mr. D'Souza is wrong 22 times a day. Mr. D'Souza is a neoconservative Heritage Foundation think tank guy. The Heritage Foundation claims to support the values of the founders. They speak in terms of free markets and prosperity and limited government and liberty. Okay, that's great and all, but the true question should be, Where does the Heritage Foundation stand on the question relative to the special relationship between the United States and Great Britain? To cite the final paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, we therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is ought to be totally dissolved and that as a free and independent states they have full power to levy war conclude peace contract alliances establish commerce and do all other acts and things all other acts and things which independent states may of right do 
and for the support of this declaration with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Since the foundation of the United States in 1776, the United Kingdom has long made repeated attempts to directly and indirectly sabotage our country. They torched our capital to the ground in 1812. Upon the Central Bank of England recalling debts in the 1830s, they may have convinced the elite banking class in New York City to burn down Wall Street in December 1835 as a means to pay their debts for financing infrastructural projects like the Erie Canal and the railroads. They incited a third direct conflict over Oregon Territory in 1846. They bankrolled the insurgent Confederate States of America in the 1860s. They gave their daughters to the sons of Rockefeller, Morgan, Vanderbilt, and the American robber barons so they could marry into the British aristocracy, the same families whose companies are major shareholders in the Federal Reserve to this day. After, 19, after the 1956 Suez Canal incident, the United Kingdom has offshored its international policing to the United States of America's military industrial complex, while they, for the past 60 years, have profited enormously from America's endless wars and off of American blood. If the Crown is still angry about an uprising that took place at the Dublin Post Office in 1916, led by the likes of Irish Republicans such as Padraig Pierce, Tom Clark, and James Conley, it would be foolish to presume that the Crown has forgiven and forgotten about what happened in 1776. The USA is a little over 240 years old. The Crown is almost a thousand years old. Grudges do not die. Grudges do not die. The Heritage Foundation is the leading neoconservative rhino think tank, which was created in 1973 to convince American citizens that limited investment in American infrastructure is a good thing and that our special relationship with Britain, which has historically promoted... Um, ideologically and by force, Tory Adam Smith's free market ideology as a good thing. The Heritage Foundation is solely responsible for emphasizing the personality cult of Ronald Reagan and for all the romantic notions that Ronald Reagan expressed relative to patriotism and the American dream, Reaganism, which is in actuality the facade of Bushism, dictates that our country should do the bidding of the world police to make the world safe for democracy on the terms of the city of London and by extension Switzerland to solicit profits from every nation on earth and terrorize people all around the world done at the expense of U.S. taxpayers. Our founders would consider the Heritage Foundation to be a Tory organization, more loyal to the British Crown and the British Empire, and less loyal to the people of the United States of America, or I should say, the people of the Republic of the United States. To quote the Heritage Foundation, Margaret Thatcher remains a role model of fortitude, principle, and leadership at a time of economic upheaval and mounting threats to international security. Let me say that again, international security. Thatcher's concern for Britain, the special relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States and the future of the free world remained undimmed throughout her life. Oh, so noble, you know. She was very noble, except for the time when she starved Bobby Sands to death and Reagan helped her. Our founders created the United States to create a separation from the British crown. They did not. They did not create the United States for the United States to get in bed with the Tories and do the bidding of the crown, which has been promulgating British imperialism imperialism for the past 1,000 years since the Crusades. 
the Heritage Foundation and their subsidiaries, such as PragerU, will do their best to convince you that before Ronald Reagan, there was no solid ideological foundation for the Republican Party and that no party switch ever occurred. That is a big, fat lie. The party switch did occur back in 1912. When Theodore Roosevelt ran for a third term and broke off from the Republican Party after the Republican Party the establishment anyway, decided to back the incumbent president, William Howard Taft. Roosevelt broke off from the Republicans and formed his own bull moose party and outpolled Taft in the 1912 election. Got more electoral votes than Taft in the 1912 election. But because Teddy split the vote, the election went to Woodrow Wilson. Upon Wilson appointing Franklin Roosevelt as assistant secretary of the Navy, the Teddy, Ro uh, Teddy Ro Roosevelt loyalists would become Democrats, and they would vote in droves for FDR, who was a Democrat, by the time the 1932 election rolled around. And solely based on Franklin sharing the same, the, the same surname with his cousin, who, mind you, who, mind you, at that time period, was the most popular president in American history. I mean, the guy's face was carved on a mountain, next to Lincoln and Jefferson and Washington. Hello? However, due to the Southern Democrats not being fans of either Theodore or Franklin Roosevelt or the FDR coalition made up of Teddy loyalists, urban Democrats, and African-American voters, well, they decided to switch parties and join the business wing of the Republican Party. Strom Thurmond is the most blatant example. He is the Dixiecrats of all Dixiecrats. And they would form the basis of what would become the Republican Party establishment of today, or termed as so-called rhinos. Dinesh D'Souza and his Heritage Foundation affiliates will tell you, the Republican Party has always been the party of limited government, low taxes, deregulation, personal responsibility. And you know what? Perhaps since 1912, that might have been true. However, before 1912, the Republican Party was the party of proactive government, which worked to make the lives of our citizenry better. The Republican Party under Abraham Lincoln utilized the power of the federal government to put down an illegal rebellion subsidized by the British crown, orchestrated by southern states to protect the institution of slavery. In addition to that, President Lincoln passed the Homestead Act, which essentially gave free land away to people who left the East Coast to settle West. The Heritage Foundation would demonize such a program as socialist. The Republican Party under James Garfield, my second favorite president, mind you, he would have been a great president if he wasn't assassinated eight, eight months into his term, and Chester Arthur imposed strict civil service reforms to purge all corrupt political officials from both parties, Democrat and Republican, hiding under every rock in Washington, D.C., and Garfield and Arthur's uh, Republican Party also cracked down harshly on the Ku Klux Klan and promoted a public education system. Let me say that again, a public education system to educate the children of the formerly enslaved so they could be integrated into a post-Civil War United States and trained to be productive citizens. The Republican Party under Theodore Roosevelt, my favorite president, took the side of the working class fighting for an eight-hour workday, weekends off, and better pay. R R Roosevelt took the side of the workers against the robber barons. Roosevelt broke the Rockefeller-owned Standard Oil Trust, the Carnegie-owned U.S. Steel Trust, the J.P. Morgan-owned Bankers Trust, in order that private monopolies do not become more powerful than the central government. Roosevelt conserved 30 million acres of land to protect our natural beauty from being destroyed by the robber barons. Roosevelt built up the Navy into the most powerful in the world. Roosevelt created the FDA to prevent robber barons from poisoning our citizenry until Ronald Reagan had it deregulated so Donald Rumsfeld could poison you with aspartame. Roosevelt also desegregated the federal government. And you know who 
you know who segregated it again? Woodrow Wilson. And Roosevelt was the first president to invite an African-American, Booker T. Washington, to dinner at the White House, which was, in the context of that time period, extremely scandalous. And he is the only person in history, in recorded history, to win both the Medal of Honor, leaving his Cush Assistant uh, Secretary of the Navy job in D.C., to literally fight in the Spanish-American War and literally fight alongside of the soldiers. How many politicians do you know of do that? Nah, not many, not many, at least not today. And he's also, and he also won a Nobel Peace Prize. That's right. He's the only president to win a Medal of Honor, only person, not president, only person to win a Medal of Honor and a Nobel Peace Prize in history. And he got his Nobel Peace Prize for uh, mediating a peace agreement between Russia and Japan. The Republican Party under Dwight Eisenhower used our tax dollars... I know you got you know, the taxation is theft. People will get all upset, but listen, they he used our tax dollars to create and build a state-of-the-art interstate highway system that millions still drive on today. Every and Eisenhower also used the military to enforce the Dred Scott decision to force integration of public schooling in Little Rock, Arkansas, in 1957. If the Heritage Foundation existed in that time, they would accuse Eisenhower of being a communist loyal to Stalin for doing such a thing. That's how they think, all right? We should no longer embrace the pseudo-British crown-friendly neoconservative fake patriotism espoused by the Heritage Foundation, Dinesh D'Souza, he's guilty of it, Ben Shapiro, and these marauds of neocon Bush loyalist lackeys addicted to the poison of Reaganism. We need to re-embrace classical republicanism of Lincoln, Garfield, Roosevelt, and Eisenhower. Our citizenry is suffering right now. The modern day robber baron stole $5 trillion from our republic during the COVID lockdown of 2020. $12 trillion was looted from our republic in the form of endless wars to make British petroleum wealthy off of Iraq's suffering and our economic suffering. Our republic has been siphoned of trillions of dollars, which are sitting in Caribbean offshore bank accounts under British crown jurisdiction. Our roads are crumbling. We have a supply chain crisis. Gas prices are being inflated to, due to Biden shutting down the pipeline and also due to price gouging from the elitist interest who Biden works for. We have mass shootings, mass drug addiction. Our citizenry are being priced out of their homes due to real estate speculators. We have more homeless and destitute people than ever before. There are homeless single mothers with no support system who cannot get Section 8 housing, even in liberal states. The citizenry of our republic, both left and right, has lost its sense of history and tradition, or it has a distorted sense of history and tradition. We have an infant formula shortage. We have a limited industrial capacity in this country, so we don't produce and manufacture things anymore. The globalist robber baron class is priming this country for a race war, which will rip this country in half and allow the United Kingdom to assume the United States into Canada as part of their Kanzuk designs, merging Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. Kanzuk as a means to recreate the British Empire in the 21st century, which is why the Heritage Foundation and Mr. Dinesh D'Souza supported Brexit. Brexit was not a rejection of globalism. Brexit was about expanding globalism under the British Empire banner. Do not be fooled by the facade of Mr. D'Souza critiquing the Democrats. Outwardly, they're opposed to one another. Inwardly, uh, they're on the same side, folks. The Democrats and the rhino establishment, they both work for the same corrupt aristocratic interests that seek to undermine our central government, undermine our constitution, confuse and turn our citizenry, citizenry against each other, and weaken our country to such an extent where the United States of America can be assumed into the Kanzuk North American Union. In closing, 
the way forward is not embracing more Reaganism and more neoconservatism as Mr. D'Souza and Ben Shapiro promotes, which the Democratic Party also promotes and also embraces, albeit with extreme wokeness. So, you know, to, to, to prove to their constituents that, oh, well, look at us. We're more progressive than the Republican Party. No, you're not more progressive than the rhinos. You're the same thing. Outwardly, they are different, but structurally, they are the same. The way forward is to embrace the classical republicanism of Lincoln, Garfield, Roosevelt, and Eisenhower. Our country does not have a perfect history. We've done a lot of things wrong, especially as it pertains to African-Americans and the indigenous. We, we, you know, it, it happens. We did a lot of things wrong. But, but, but what makes the United States great is historical progress. We amend our mistakes and we do better tomorrow than we did today. This country is worth saving. Our history of rebellion against the crown is worth preserving, and we must not allow for the Tories, whether they present as liberal like Stacey Abrams, whose favorite book is Atlas Shrugged, or present as conservative like Dinesh D'Souza, whose favorite book is also Atlas Shrugged, to rip this country apart so we can be reassumed by the very archaic, backward, and perverse entity that we declared our independence from in 1776. It's time to make the Republican Party Lincolnite again, for that is our true heritage. The rhinos are the mules, and the mules are the rhinos, and they are both Tories, and there is no room for Tories, whether they present as left or right in the Republic of the United States. God save our American state. Down with the crown. This is Comrade Pella, signing out.